Hello everyone, my name is Paweł Gora. I'm a PhD candidate in computer science at the University of Warsaw. Today I will tell you about the new hybrid quantum annealing algorithms for solving vehicle routing problem. The algorithms were developed at the University of Warsaw within the frame of the research project Green Last My Delivery, supported by EAT Food. The presented research was also published in the article New Hybrid Quantum Annealing Algorithms for Solving Vehicle Routing Problem, co-authored by several researchers from the University of Warsaw. This research was presented at the ICCS conference this year. All right, let's first recall what's the vehicle routing problem. We have a directed graph with non-negative costs assigned to edges. We also have n selected vertices in this graph. They represent the customers we want to visit. The question is, what is the shortest possible route that visits all of them and returns to the origin vertex depot? If we have only one vehicle, then we have an instance of the traveling salesman problem. In general, if we have more vehicles and all of them should start and finish in the depot, we have the vehicle routing problem. There are different variants of this problem. For example, we may have capacitated vehicle routing problem in which the vehicles have bounded capacities or capacitated vehicle routing problem with time windows in which vehicles have bounded capacities while customers have time windows in which they want to be served. It's important to know that all these problems are empty hard, so most likely there are no efficient algorithms for finding the exact optimal solutions. Therefore, heuristics and metaheuristics are currently state of the art. Let's introduce the following notation. Let T be a set of identifiers of M vehicles and V be a set of identifiers of N customers and one depot, which is denoted as N plus one. Therefore, we have n plus one identifiers in the set B. Cij is a cost of travel from node i to node g. Obviously, Cii is equal to zero. A variable x i j k is equal to one if in a given setting, the vehicle i visits the node j as k location on its route. Otherwise, this variable is equal to zero. Okay, finally, we can start going to our Kibo formulation. Let's define the function C, which is a cost of a given VRP solution. So for a given assignment of variables X. It seems to be complex, but just to give you an intuition, the first component of C is a sum of all costs of travels from the depot to the first visited node, which is the first section of each vehicle's route. The second component is a cost of the last section of a route to depot, in a special case when a single car serves all n orders. Only in such a case this component can be greater than zero. The last component is the cost of all other sections of routes. All right, just one more notation before we proceed. Let's consider the following binary function. The values of all m variables are from the set 0, 1. The minimum value of the function a is equal to minus 1, and this value can be achieved only if exactly one of the variables is equal to 1. Now, to assure that each delivery is served by exactly one vehicle, and exactly once, and that each vehicle is in exactly one place at a given time, the following term, Q, should be included in our Kubo formulation. The first term, the first component of Q, is equal to zero if and only if each delivery is served by exactly one vehicle and exactly once. This is what we want to have. The second term is equal to zero, if each vehicle is in exactly one place at a given time. Now, by definition of VRP, Kubo representation of this optimization problem is equal to the weighted sum of C and Q for some constants A1 and A2, which should be set to ensure that the solution found 
by the quantum annular minimizes C and satisfies the aforementioned constraints Q. We call this approach the full cubo solver. Later, we improved it a bit and we developed the next approach, which is called the average partition solver. We decrease the number of variables for each vehicle by assuming that every vehicle serves approximately the same number of orders, up to A plus L deliveries, where A is the total number of orders divided by the number of vehicles, so it's N divided by M, and L is a parameter called limit radius, which controls the number of orders. So in practice, we usually want our fleet to be evenly loaded, so it's reasonable. Thanks to that, the number of variables is now lower, which simplifies computations. Later, we introduce the next approach, DBSCAN solver. It is a hybrid algorithm which combines quantum annealing with a classical algorithm, recursive DBSCAN. DBSCAN solver uses recursive DBSCAN as a clustering algorithm with a limited size of clusters. Then, TSP is solved by full cubo server separately for each cluster. We can just assume that the number of vehicles is equal to one and solve the instance of TSP. However, if the number of clusters is equal to or lower than the number of vehicles, the answer is known immediately. Otherwise, the solver runs recursively considering clusters as deliveries, so that each cluster contains orders which in the final result are served one after another without leaving the cluster. We also concluded that by limiting the total sum of weights of deliveries in clusters, this algorithm can solve CVRP if all capacities of vehicles are equal. The last and most advanced algorithm is called Solution Partitioning Solver. This algorithm divides traveling salesman problem solution found by another algorithm, for example, full cubo solver, into consecutive intervals, which are the solution for CVRP. So we can assume that each interval is visited by a single vehicle. Now we can do that using dynamic programming by considering the cost of the best solutions for orders up to a certain index and for a given set of vehicles. And this is a classical part. So the quantum part is used only to solve the trailing system problem. This algorithm would still have a time complexity being an exponential function of the number of vehicles. But we can speed up the computations by assuming that instead of considering sets of vehicles, we consider just a given sequence of vehicles. So we can randomly select a sequence of vehicles and then run computations for this sequence. The formula in the dynamic programming is now simpler and we can do computations much faster. We can now select some random permutations of vehicles and perform dynamic programming for each of them. If the number of possible permutations is small, which is, for example, a case in which all vehicles are identical so that we have only one permutation, or if there are just two or three types of vehicles, so the number of possible permutations is still relatively small and all such cases are realistic, we may potentially check all the possible permutations and find the exact optimal solution, assuming of course that we can solve TSP. We run multiple experiments in which our goal is to compare different algorithms, the quantum or hybrid algorithms which I presented and classical algorithms. In case of quantum or hybrid experiments, we run computations using D-Wave Sleep Platform and two solvers, QBSolve on Quantum Processing Unit or CPU and Hybrid Solver on QPU and CPU at the same time. In case of classical algorithms, we tested simulated annealing, B-algorithm, evolutionary annealing, and DBSCAN with simulated annealing. We prepared several datasets. Crystal Fides 79, a standard benchmark dataset for CVRP, well known and frequently studied by the scientific community. It contains 14 tests with different number of vehicles, capacities, and number of orders. 
and a dataset built by us based on the realistic road network of Belgium acquired from the OpenStreetMap service. It contained 51 tests. In case of the Christophites dataset, for the purpose of our experiments, we selected only nine datasets because in case of other tests, some hybrid or classical algorithms were not able to find any good solutions. For the realistic test cases from the OpenStreetMap service, we prepared 51 tests in which we considered different numbers of orders from 1 to 200 and different locations of orders and depots. First, we investigated full cubo solver on test cases small 0 to small 9. On every test except small 0, we ran experiments for three different numbers of vehicles, 1, 2, and 3, on a quantum processor, its classical simulator, and using a hybrid solver. On small zero tests, there were only two orders, so we tested only one and two vehicles. As we can see in the table, Cubisolve, full Cubosolver CPU and full Cubosolver QPU, exacerbates final results in test cases with more vehicles. For more vehicles, it can potentially generate the same solution as for less vehicles, because some vehicles can be just ignored. Solutions generated with hybrid solver, FQS hybrid, confirm that. However, the size of our Cubo makes the solutions with more vehicles unavailable for Cubisolve. In hybrid solver, we have such a problem in only one case. However, in only one test case, Cubisolve was able to improve the solution returned for smaller number of vehicles. In addition, in most cases, Cubisolve was not able to find a solution on QPU. The size of the instance and the number of the required variables and qubits was just too large. Also, the required time of computations on QPU was worse than in the case of CPU or hybrid approach. Therefore, we concluded that it doesn't make sense to run more experiments on QPU for larger test cases with more cars and more orders. And we conducted next tests only using QBSolve on CPU and using a hybrid solver. For larger VRP instances, medium zero to medium nine, we observe that the transition from one vehicle to two vehicles is difficult. Cubisolve usually returns much worse results, and there was only one exception. But for the hybrid solver, in only one case, the result for two vehicles is better. But the results are usually still better than in case of Cubisolve. We also notice that the order of deliveries in tests with one vehicle was not optimal for a majority of test cases. Only the least instances with up to 15 orders seem to be solved optimally. An interesting case is the average partition solver. In most test cases, the results found using APS were better than the results found by full cubo solver. We can also notice that differences between results for three vehicles and results for two vehicles generated by APS are lower than the differences between results for two vehicles and one vehicle generated by FQS. However, in case of three vehicles, QBSOLV on CPU still can find better solutions with only two vehicles. The hybrid solver can find better solutions in cases with three vehicles than in cases with only two vehicles in four out of 10 test cases. The TV scan solver usually gives worse results than, than the average partition solver, but we expected that it may change in case of tests with more orders thanks to uh, utilizing the power of recursive TV scan. Indeed, on big test cases with a larger number of orders, the DBSCAN solver gives much better results than the average partition solver. Additionally, DBSCAN solver can be run on larger instances and don't need the assumption that every vehicle serves approximately the same number of deliveries as it is in the case of the average partition solver. At the beginning, we tested solution partitioning solver on test cases where all capacities are equal uh, in order to compare results with a uh, dbscan solver which can solve this problem. The results are presented in the table. In some cases our solvers were not able to find the proper solutions so we mark such cases as not valid. But in general solution partitioning solver outperformed dbscan solver. Therefore we decided to test further on the solution partitioning solver and compare it with three classical algorithms, simulated annealing, B-algorithm, and evolutionary annealing. 
We run next experiments with even more orders on mixed test cases generated by us. And it can be seen that solution partitioning solver usually gives a bit worse results than very good classical metaheuristics on the data sets from real world OpenStreetMap data. However, the solution partitioning solver gives comparable results and sometimes even better results on a benchmark data set, Christos Fides 79, which is often used for comparing algorithms solving VRP. Based on that, from the conducted experiments, we can conclude that it doesn't make sense to run experiments only on a quantum processing unit for large test cases. Solution partitioning solver, but with QBSolve run on CPU, gives the best results among the quantum algorithms. We compared solution partitioning solver with some classical metaheuristics for CVRP, which are well known in scientific literature, uh, such as simulated annealing, the algorithm or evolutionary annealing, and it usually gives a bit worse, but sometimes better results. As for the future plans, we would like to develop our algorithms further in order to solve the capacitated vehicle routing problem with time windows and other variants of VRP. We also want to investigate for which scenarios the hybrid algorithms give the best results comparing to classical algorithms. So for which scenarios we may expect some advantages. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me.